initial cost is higher uh, around about compared to a signal, but there is no, the maintenance that is required for a roundabout is, is less over time. So whereas it may cost twice as, twice as much for a roundabout as it would a signal, over time the city can save money because they're not having to worry about the signal and they don't go down, they don't have to have uh, maintenance on those signal timers and the signal boxes and the signals themselves. And they don't have to replace the signal lights. Monty, do you have an idea of what our line item in the budget is for signal maintenance for the signals that we currently have? Our existing signals cost us about $50,000 a year to maintain. Um, and that's if we don't have any signal engineering that needs to be done, resetting. And As mayor, I'm just telling you, I get a lot of phone calls about signals. Yes, sir. Um, is, there, is there anywhere that I can research that I can go to uh, read about uh, speeds on tree-lined streets? I live on a tree-lined street. It doesn't slow traffic down. They get quiz to buy my house all the time. Is there any research that I can go to to find out about that? Yeah, there, there's uh, plenty of websites out there. If you just Google complete streets, uh, you'll, you'll find a lot of research on speed reduction from these types of facilities. And complete I'll be, streets. And I'll be glad to put some of those links up on the city website as well. Yard flood. Are you going to uh, 
uh, make sure the degrading is done properly so that the water flows. And I know across the street from Boone Road, it sits in their front yard. So if this is going to be lifted, is the water going to slope down back into my yard and then it just sits there? Now, uh, FTN right now is doing a hydraulic study on that, on that area. And so we'll use their information to ensure that the water levels stay where they're at. We will most likely raise Boone Road, but the water levels in your yard will stay the same. Wait, you said the water levels will stay the same? Or improve, yeah. Okay, well, it's bad now. <laughs> we're, we're waiting we're waiting to get the information back from FTN on what what their analysis is and what improvements they have when we get that we will ask those specific questions will it improve in these areas and we'll be we'll be better able to answer that question for you at that meeting okay. Sean has Sean you want to answer what you have just, just talking with you earlier, it sounds like the culverts that are under Boone Road, where you live, are undersized right now. So we would uh, increase the size of those. To, well, they just put in three new ones. Right. But, <laughs> now, I don't know what size they are, but I don't know. Maybe from the, it, Have you had a good enough range that those were put in to notice if there's a difference or not? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, because I think they put them in right after the Boone Road was Yes, sir. Uh, I'm no hydraulic engineer by any means, but I have washed dishes. And until you do something with a railroad track, it acts as a levee. There's one place for the water to go under the train trestle, and you can raise the roads as high as you want to. This is still going to flood. It's a hundred year floodplain. It's always going to flood until you remove that railroad track where the water can go downstream. It's just as simple as that. The, F, the FTN framework is looking at if, if and where additional culverts need to be put under the railroad track um, to alleviate that issue. That's, that's part of, of what they're looking at. Um, yes, and you're absolutely right. Our ball fields will probably always flood. But we can flood. We can have four foot of rain out there. Um, um, and and if, if the ball fields flood, you know, it's just, we just don't want to impact anybody's homes or, or that type, and keep the road open. But if the ball fields flood every once in a while, it can flood on Sunday, four foot of rain out there, and we can play ball on Wednesday. That's not ideal, but that's the best place to put parkland is for water, uh, places to hold water during heavy, heavy rains. Um, but it will, it will improve based on the uh, recommendations it followed from FTM. And I'll share with you, FTN did a study on the north side of the interstate, and we're just now completing some of that work from about six years ago that, uh, in recommendations that they've made, and we've already noticed a huge difference. And so they, FTN, I have a lot of confidence in them. They do a really good job. That's just that's their area of expertise, and that's why we've, we've stuck with them. So I think if we'll listen to what they have to say, we will improve the water situation that we have on this side of town. Yes. Theoretically, to put culverts in the open ditches and then cover them over, is that yes. theoretically the plan? Yes. There's so many along the road, especially around Tanglewood, there is open ditches. Yes. And All of that will be. How, how would that be cleaned out? You know, they're going to stop up. Is there going to be access to clean those culverts out internally? Yes, the city has a machine, and we have a maintenance program that. We take care of that around the city, all over the city on a regular basis. And when they're closed, the things I've learned since I've been mayor, that's, I've asked the same question before. But when ditches are closed like that, they don't fill up as much. They don't have to be cleaned out. You'll notice we go down through Boone Road and we pull the debris and the leaves and the stuff out of the ditches on a regular basis. It, it, it lends itself to less maintenance. But we have a machine that we can put, it's like a big vacuum cleaner, can put down in those drainage ditches and just clean them right out. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Monty? <laughs> if they're designed right, we won't have to clean them. Okay. And Garber's going to design them right. Pressure on them. Yeah, pressure. They, they self clean when they're contained like that. Okay. Yes. Uh, regarding the fences that you will have to take down, there will be some, maybe all of them. And you, I've heard the temporary fence described. Is the funding <coughs> included for a permanent fence, or are we going to live with that temporary fence until more money comes down the pipe? No, 
your fences will be, any fences taken down will be restored um, as, as good or better than they are when we took them down. We could, at, the time, at the end of construction, at the end of construction, when when they're finished construction and your temporary fence comes down, a permanent fence will go up. Yes, yes, the city's expense, absolutely. We'll be giving those fences back to you once we're through with them, so we won't maintain them for forever. Once we put the new fence back up, it'll belong to you. Just like it does now. Yes. My question is with regard to the uh, the first section from Reynolds Road to Tanglewood. Did you do any studies on the left turn traffic today to determine if a left turn lane is actually needed in that section? And the reason for my question is that's a very old section of town and it's very narrow through there. And there is no way to put that many lanes of traffic in a bike lane and a sidewalk without drastically impacting people in that area. So my question is, have we truly determined that there's a need to left turn line? We, this is a concept, so we think that there's a need for left, there definitely is down at Reynolds Road, obviously. Uh, but you're right, there, there's not a lot of residents down there, and so we have not done turning movements in that area to truly determine if we have to have a left turn lane through that entire area. So that will be done during the design, stage, design stages of, of this project. And a lot of the stuff you see up here is a conservative guess at what's going to be needed. So there will be improvements made to this facility as we move forward. In, in relationship to that question, is this median the same width as is that median or is it less? No, this, this median that you see here, this, the, this stamp uh -huh. brick is about six feet wide and this is a full left left turn line. This, are we at 11 or 10 right now? 10, 10 feet. Yes, ma'am. Can you give me the different phases that we'll go through for this project? So you know right now we're in the conceptual design phase. Is that where we are now, the conceptual phase? We are in the conceptual phase. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Give me the phases. The phases that this project will go through. Election. Election. Yeah, the, yeah I'll, I'll, let me let her talk to the, the political phase and then I'll talk to kind of the engineering phases. Wait there, Ross, let me get your question real quick and then I'll finish. I'll have a question. That's right. Yeah. I think it's important. I, 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 I have the honor and privilege of representing Ward 3, which impacts much of this area impacts. This area of Bryant, and I know many of you know this, you guys are the heart of Bryant, and your tax money is funded to grow from Bryant. And I understand that, and I appreciate that. And I just want to let you know, as we move forward, we'll continue to be, I'll continue to be an advocate for you and your homes and your property, et cetera. It's crucial to understand that I think we all agree that the road needs to be improved in some shape or fashion. But it needs to be done at the least impact to your property. We have business owners, we have homeowners, we have other citizens, and we need to ensure that whatever plan is done and approved has the least impact on your home and your property because there's a key to that. It is your property. You have worked and saved to pay for that property. That's crucial. Um, the solution needs to be practical and something that everyone can agree with. Unfortunately, one of the things that's happening in our country is people take one side or the other and there's, there's, there's no middle ground. And I would like to think that the citizens of Bryant would find a good medium with this that could accommodate everyone and, and find a mutual agreeable solution for everybody. And maybe that's politically incorrect, but that's just the way it is and I don't really care um, because I think that's the right thing for us to do. Uh, Uh, 
there are more pedestrians in the city and more bike riders that we are trying to accommodate in this plan, but we do need to be respectful of everyone and talk about this and all come to a common ground to improve the road because it is very much needed. And we need to be respectful of those that live on the road as well as the other citizens in the city. So the, the trees can be put in different places as well as outside on the outside lanes and make this a beautiful something that we can all be proud of. So I commend you for being here today. Thank you. I, I haven't forgotten your question yet. I'm going to get to it. Is there a plan to work with the railroad and keeping the railroad ditch cleaned out because they would not maintain that and that contributes to the flooding? on the south side of the road. We, we will look into all of that. When we get the information back, back from FTN, we will be having some really good dialogue with the railroad department. I have witnessed the railroad coming through when trees have blown down across the tracks and cutting the trees and dumping them in the ditch and not coming back to clean them up. If, when that happens, if you just let the city know, we'll help, we'll help address that. We have a a stormwater department now that, that goes out and cleans things. They write letters. It, it, it's in conjunction with another um, uh, government agency. Um, but we're we're trying to stay on top of that as much as possible. We have a stronger maintenance schedule of our, all of our stormwater ditches than we've ever had before. Instead of waiting until a resident calls and says this needs to be cleaned out, uh, we have a schedule for those. When when we get a phone call and we've overlooked one because it's hard to go find all the ditches then we put that on the schedule so we're we're really increased um maintenance in that area so you can communicate that with us yes Ms. Cole. somebody to ask okay i'm looking after the bryant cemetery okay i can't understand if you all can do all this why you couldn't have your people that haul off the garbage stop there and empty that barrel maybe a few times a year I mean. But they I won't do it. I will look into that. I have to go over there myself and get the and into the barrel. Well, Miss Bella, you should not be emptying the barrel. I will talk to Derek about that and we will see what well, we can they do. Well, they used to do it. Okay. Thank you. For, I was unaware of that, but thank you for bringing us on to you. I appreciate the it. Mayor was there. Why then? Of course, they just emptied the barrel when they went. <laughs> okay. With the tray. Now they don't do it. Well, between Monty, between Monty and Derek, I bet they can get that taken care of. Well, I hope you can. And I won't have to carry it all. Trunk of my car. Okay, I'm gonna give everybody my phone number. Five oh one. Oh my word. I do this all the time. Uh, nobody, I haven't had anybody abuse it, but I want to hear from you. When there's when there's an issue like Miss Gola brought up, the only way I know about it is if I get a phone call or I get a text message or I get an email. My phone number is five oh one four two five zero four. Seven eight. And if you have a little issue, no matter how big or how small, I do not mind it being brought to my attention so that it can be taken care of. Because if we don't know about it, if you don't help us by letting us know about an issue, we can't. We're very unlikely to address it. And also, I'd like to say that there's a new feature for any of you that use the internet, use the website. There's a feature on the website called Report of Concern. When you go to Report of Concern, if it is a street issue, it creates an email, a work order, that goes straight to the street department. If it's an issue for animal control, it goes straight to animal control. I can see that report and know that those issues are being addressed. So that you don't even have to figure out, okay, who do I contact about this issue? You just go to report a concern, follow through the um, thing. And, but if you don't want to use the email, you don't want to do that, just call me. And I'll, I'll 